And finally, what has the Bishop of Lewis, the Right Reverend Wallace Ben, had to say this week? Has it got anything to do with the annual bonfire at Lewis? No, but no. it's beyond belief. Because they, they, they burn inappropriate people, don't they, on the bonfire at Lewis? Yeah. Well, it's one way of dealing with the old age pensioners. <laughs> Because they find after 80, they go up like Tinder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what the right Reverend Wallace Ben had to say. He said that the credit crunch is God's will. <laughs> How does he know? I think he was guessing, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Richard Dawkins would say about it. He would say, no, it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> Almost Probably. Certainly. Oh, yeah, Probably. Like, Probably. Any amount of money on that. Hey, eh, cocky, eh, cocky. He's speaking for Richard Dawkins now. Mm. I'm his representative on Earth. <laughs> but he's on Earth as well. Yeah, I know, there's been a bit of a mix-up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're looking into it at Human Resources. <laughs> In his newsletter, the Bishop of Lewis controversially declared that the credit crunch is God's way of showing his anger at Britain's materialism. And if you think God's angry now, Wait till he sits down in front of his telly and finds that Jonathan Ross isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the lesser stories of the week, as it doesn't involve two idiots baiting a pensioner. <laughs> 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 After tough negotiations, Britain agreed to help bail out some of the crisis-hit East European countries. Gordon Brown wouldn't reveal what we get in return. But let's just say... He's looking forward to next year's Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> As the crisis deepened, Gordon Brown flew to Paris to meet President Sarkozy, where, after several hours, they decided to leave an obscene message on the Icelandic <laughs> Prime Minister's <laughs> antiphon. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, two points each. Thank you. And now to round two, the jigsaw of news. Fingers on buzzers. This is the news. Oh. Oh. I buzzed. Yeah. Yes. To be fair. That was quick. Are you psychic? <laughs> well, I thought you no, showed I us the that picture and then we buzzed, but if the trick is that we listen to the answer and then buzz... <laughs> I'm perfectly happy. Is it about Volkswagen? <laughs> Someone has invented a way to make the end of this film work. Well, they've worked out a formula of how Michael Caine's character gets the gold bullion off the oh. coach that's balancing on the edge of a cliff. Yeah. The Royal Society of Chemistry has set a contest in which entrants mm. must supply a solution to the literally cliff-hanging final scene of the Italian job. Dr Lewis Dartnell, an astrobiologist, said they could use superconducting magnets to haul the gold to their side of the bus. But then he <laughs> added, unfortunately, Gold is not <laughs> magnetic. <laughs> and so it would have to be vaporised to a blindingly hot cloud of plasma. <laughs> I tried that once. I think it was in the Sontaran experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? F***ing disaster. Was it? <laughs> this week, a very stupid posh boy attempted to recreate a scene from the Italian job by driving his brand new Mini up some stairs at Bristol University. According to the Sun, he caused the radiator to blow up, the two front tires to burst, and both airbags to explode. Whereas anyone knows, he was only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Uh, John Prescott, he did a documentary this week on the subject of class. Yes, yes. And he, did you catch that, Ian? No, I missed it. I'll, I'll say it again. John Prescott. <laughs> this is John Prescott's documentary in which he drives around the country in his Jaguar or sits in the garden of his large detached house, musing on why he's been so cruelly held back by the class <laughs> system. <laughs> 
I like the fact that it showed John Prescott in a different kind of light. He's a man making a serious documentary about Britain's class system, and he's not just a buffoon who never stops eating. Let's have a look at a few clips. <laughs> don't take the brother cross <laughs> a group called Chumba Wumba. It's usually out of a mug. So I just got up and gave him a tap on the side of his ribs and he went on the floor. <laughs> and you've been attacked by lads. Again, it's another kind of class attitude. Head button. Yes. You've got a red button you're I don't want to appear to be a snob, but what a dreadful oaf. Eh? <laughs> oh, he's a very civilised man. Is, it, is it? John Prescott. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what word came up during the filming that John Prescott had never even heard of? Diet. <laughs> is it bulimia? Oh, that's unkind. <laughs> he brought it up. He always brought it up. When he met three girls off a London estate... Oh, he didn't know what a chav was. He hadn't ever heard uh, the phrase chav, had he? Or the word chav, rather. He then wonders what class they regard them... Set. Let's have a look. Well, what class are you, then? I'm just, like, middle class. I don't, like... You're I'm... middle class? Yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't got loads of money. I'm not poor. But I think you're the first one I've seen which I would say you're working class, but you would say you're middle class. But I don't work. <laughs> I agree with her. She's got a point, <laughs> John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah. What disconcerting habit does John Prescott have when being interviewed by female journalists, according to Rachel Cook of The Observer? Does he manage to undo their bras with his mind? <laughs> he gets his words in the right order to confuse them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Rachel Cook heard from a female colleague he hoiked one leg over the arm of his chair so that what she politely called his pelvis was pointing at her like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he doesn't do that to John Humphreys. Really? <laughs> this is John Prescott's documentary on class. Yeah? <laughs> uh, Prescott recently promoted his autobiography on the QE2. He was actually on the QE2 for two reasons. One, to try and sell his book, and two, <laughs> ballast. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, at the end of this round, it's Ian and Vince with three, and Paul and Chris with three. Round three is the connections round. What do these three have in common? Nicholas Sarkozy? Sarah Palin and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yes? Sarah Palin, uh, she was in the news recently. Uh, she's been impersonated on American television. Adolf Hitler, uh, he was impersonated by Charlie Chaplin uh, in a film called The Great Dictator, and, of course, has been impersonated since. And the president of France, wasn't there something about a voodoo doll recently yeah. that uh, he wasn't very happy about? So the connection is they've all been impersonated or, or by ob objects or by other people. It's dolls, okay. though, isn't I mean, it? They've, they've all got dolls. Adolf there's Hitler a, doll. There, there's Adolf the doll, big hit in Austria. <laughs> really? No, I've made that up. Oh. <laughs> You're quite right, actually. They have all been immortalised as dolls. Oh. Sarah Palin action figures went on sale last month, soon after she was chosen as John McCain's running mate. There's the Tomb Raider. Palin, <laughs> ideal for visiting John McCain next year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is quite a good moment for Ian, cos he fancies her. Well, you get, have you got one of these? Have you got one of these dolls yet, Ian? No, but I'm getting one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for some reason, the slutty schoolgirl. Ah! Oh! <laughs> I wanted to meet you so much when I was a kid. So much! <laughs> <laughs> and now look at it. You're so let down. My dreams are shattered. <laughs> one said...